Good afternoon and welcome to the 2018 New England Greenhouse Webinars. My name is Jeffrey Jue from University of Massachusetts Extension and my co-host today is Russell Odales from University of Connecticut. The webinar series is a collaborative effort of UMass Extension, University of Connecticut Extension, and University of New Hampshire Extension, and it's sponsored by Sangro Horticulture and Blackmore Company. The theme for the webinar today, the theme for the webinar series is Growing Healthy Roots, and the title of the webinar today is Fungicide Drenches. And our speaker is Kerry Stafford, who is the hand grower at Cafico Greenhouses in Sunbury, Massachusetts. If you have any question during the webinar, please type it on the question box. And at the end of the webinar, Kerry will answer the questions. After the webinar, there will be a short survey. Please complete the survey before exiting the webinar. And before I pass the controls to Kerry, I would like to mention that the recordings of the webinars are posted on the UMass Extension Greenhouse and Floriculture Program website, and the uh, URL is shown at the bottom of the slide. Now, at this point, I'd like to pass the controls to, to Kerry to continue with the webinar. Okay, Kerry, so are you as now? Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Um, hello and welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Carrie Stafford. I work at Cavicchio Greenhouses. I'm the head grower here. Today we're just going to go over some fungicide drenches for keeping your roots healthy. Um, a little bit about Cavicchio's. Um, here's a nice picture of the farm. We are a 200-acre farm, family-owned. Um, we supply to landscapers, garden centers, box stores, grocery store chains, um, a little bit of everybody. We grow primarily annuals and perennials, and um, we re-wholesale nursery stock in tropicals. I'm going to start, before you even start any fungicide drenches is where I'm going to start today. Um, obviously, when you're doing fungicide drenches or anything in your greenhouse, you want to start clean. Um, sanitation is key of all your greenhouse space. You want to make sure before you plant anything, old crops, weeds, debris, everything is removed from your greenhouse. Um, get things cleared out, cleaned up, and ready to go. Always start with healthy plugs and liners. You don't want to be starting behind. You buy them plugs. Sometimes they come in not so good. You really don't want to use those. You want to make sure you're getting in healthy plugs and liners. Sometimes cheaper isn't better. You want to know your suppliers. Um, before you start any planting, make a plan of action. Set up preventative rotations, both for insecticides and fungicides. You want to make sure you have all your tools on hand before planting. Make sure your fertilizers are there, your chemicals are there, you have virus test kits on hand, you have rotation set up, that kind of stuff before you even get into any chemical applications. After planting, step two, planting. <laughs> After planting, make sure you have good growing practices. Maintain appropriate moisture levels for your crops. Um, use appropriate fertilizers and fertilizer levels. Check your P pH and EC regularly. Scout your crops. Scout for disease. Scout for insects. Scout for mechanical damage. We had an issue recently on the farm where we had some lecanthemum pots planted, three per pot, and one of them kept dying out. So we flip them over, check the roots, things look good, and then you're looking at the top. The biggest issue was one person planting the plug, planted it too deep. It covered over the crown. You gotta take a look at everything, you know, before you treat, make sure you're actually treating something, you know, something that's actually there. Um, there's a whole story below the lip of that pot. So as part of scouting, make sure you flip and check those as well. And like I said, plan ahead. Set up a preventative fungicide rotation for your crops. Start before a problem occurs. Um, know what you're planting. Um, research, you know, research your varieties and cultivars. Um, make sure you're planting 
strong cultivars, strong, strong varieties. Know what diseases the plants we're planting are susceptible to. Know what's going on with them. Um, make sure you know what you're buying in is what it's treated with. I have a good relationship with a lot of my plug and cutting suppliers. You know, we call them ahead of time. We ask them, what did you treat these liners with? So you're not repeating the same chemicals. You're continuing a rotation. We run a biological program in a lot of our different crops. So knowing what your plants are treated with before they come in is key. Most suppliers don't really have any issues letting you know what they're treated with. So it's helpful in creating rotations and setting up a plan of action to know what your plants were treated with prior. All right, so I broke this presentation kind of two different drenches. I did preventative drenches, and then I did kind of curative drenches. I mean, as part of a, a healthy rotation, you want to make sure you have preventative drenches and sprays in intact into your rotation. Preventative drenches are ones that really help aid the plant. They help protect the root zone. They boost, boost the plant's natural defenses. I kind of look at it as like the multivitamin of the fungicide world. They're there to really boost up your plants, really help them grow, keep them strong, especially in the really early stages when they're really stressed, like in propagation, like right after being planted. I mean, some of these liners and plants have come from a long way. They've come in a box. They've been on a truck for two days. You know, before sticking, they've been in a box for, you know, days, and then you're putting them in, and they're stressed. So you want to get things on right away to really help boost them and get them strong and healthy before even planting. So a lot of these preventative drenches aren't meant to be curative. Um, they're used to help plants, and uh, they go along with good growing practices. They're not going to really necessarily stop a disease from happening if you don't have good growing practices. They're just going to help maintain strong plants. And also, I mean, before you do any sort of chemical application, read the label. Reading the label is key. I mean, it tells you all about what you're applying, what it's used for, what it can be, you know, what it could be harmful for. Um, all chemicals on the label have a mode of action group or a frat group. Um, if you go online and look up a FRAC, which is the Fungicide Resistant Action Committee, they update their list yearly, and you want to be able to maintain a solid rotation, so you don't want to keep using the same mode of action on your plants. All right, so we'll move on to preventative drenches. Um, I broke these up into kind of classes. So right off the bat, I have your trichodermas, which are like root shields. You have the root shield plus, the root shield, the regular root shield. Another option is Ashvarillo. It's a trichoderma product that is from um, BioBest. Um, so I also wanted to break things up and give you options on different, you know, for different programs. So if you're doing an uh, organic program, I put in OMRI listed things. If you're running a bio program, I have things that go along with a bio program. If you're running a regular chemical program, I've got things in there for that as well. I've tried to represent a bunch of different companies as well in the list that I've given you. Clearly, what I'm putting out here isn't everything that's available on the market, it's just a selection of some of them. So these guys are good for your root shields and your trichodermas are a biofungicide labeled for ornamentals and cementables. They're good, into, good for helping to fight all root diseases. Um, root shield is OMRI listed, so that's good. And um, Asperillo is a BioBest product that you can order along with your bios if you're ordering bios from BioBest. It just got a limited, um, a limited label on where you can actually use it. It's only registered in limited states. I think it just got registered in Canada. Um, one of the states that is labeled, though, is Massachusetts. So if you're in Massachusetts like we are, um, it is a product that you can use. Um, another one of the Streptomyces. Um, this is another good preventative root drench. Um, they're good for treating fusarium, and they help suppress other root diseases. We have Mycostop and pre Prefence, um, and then Actinovate, which is another Streptomyces. Actinovate is OMRI listed, and Prefence is also OMRI listed. Prefence is new. It is from um, BioWorks. I think it just came out in the past month. 
Um, these are great, again, for root health. The picture of the roots in this picture next to you is actually some pansies treated with mycostats. All right, the next one are your bacillus, subtilis drenches. Um, here you have cease, companion, subtilex. They're all bunch of biofungicides again, um, good for broad spectrum root diseases. And cease is also OMRI listed. On each slide, I did put the mode of action. Um, there is a few of the biofungicides and your funguses that have a mode of action of um, NC, which is not classified. Those are often bio ones, and they don't have a lot of info on resistance so, and how they work, so they're all classified as not classified. All right, again, on to your preventative drenches. Um, here are your strobies. There is a long list of strobilians that are good for preventative drenches. These are definitely only preventative as a drench. They're great spray product, products for a bunch of other diseases. Um, these really help boost up the roots again. They're protecting against um, root diseases. They really help enhance root growth, and you use them as a drench when they're young. So in propagation is a really good time for this. And especially things like Empress um, in propagation, that's where it really shines. A lot of these other ones you can use, you know, right after planting or in propagation as well. Another preventative drench that I have for you is Receptor. This is a product that's available from, available from Helena. Um, Receptor is good for outdoor crops, indoor crops, labeled for edibles, ornamentals, kind of a little bit of everything. This helps maintain and promote healthy roots um, with a growth regulator effect as well. So if you're trying to keep things a little shorter, especially in turf or something like that, um, this is a good product for that. Um, and it just helps the plant take up your fertilizer better so you can better utilize your, your fertilizer products. All right, moving on to fungicide drenches. Um, these can be used preventatively as part of a fungicide rotation program. They can be used curatively to treat a problem. Some of these chemicals can be tank mixed for better or enhanced control. Obviously, read your label. Um, they'll tell you what you can tank mix it with, if it's available to tank mix. Tank mixing kind of helps you out when you're in the heat of the season, you're looking at your crop, it's May, you know, Mother's Day is right around the corner, your plants are melting, they seem to have maybe a little bit of a root issue. You know, really you should, you know, call somebody, get some advice, send out some samples, but things are progressing so fast, you wanna get something on, so you kind of tank mix a couple chemicals that cover a broad spectrum of root diseases you know, while you're waiting to hear back from your lab results. Um, so just, you know, check your, check your labels, read them. Tank mixing is an option for better or enhanced control, and it can really just help you out in a, in a pinch. Again, make sure you're rotating your modes of action. That is key. You don't want to be putting the same mode of action on a plant over and over again, especially if you're doing drenches. You kind of want the plant to take it up. You don't want things to be too wet, you know, you want to take them up, let them dry down before you, before you treat again. Um, also, like I was saying before, use the correct chemical for what you're treating. You know, if you don't know what you're treating, make sure to, to reach out and talk to people. Send out samples. I mean, there's a huge list of people out there that can help you. You have your university extension agents, the extension labs. You send out samples, you can call them up, you can send pictures. You have, you know, Griffin Greenhouses has GGS Pro. They're really good at in helping out. I've sent emails before, you get emails back quickly. We're lucky in this day and age, you have a smartphone. You can send pictures of what you have. You can describe things out. On top of that, you have all your chemical reps. Anybody you're buying a chemical from or a company that makes a chemical, they all have tech teams. They all have people there that are willing to help you with this kind of stuff. So 
So reach out. Also, like I said, you know, know what you're looking at. Scout your problems. If it looks nutritional, if it looks like disease, there's nutritional testing labs from like J.R. Peters and other fertilizer companies that put things out, and they have a great quick turnaround. Um, and also ask other growers. People out there are willing to help each other out, especially during the busy season. I mean, we've all been there. It's May, it's been rainy, you just want to ship plants. You don't want to overapply. You don't want to put the wrong chemical on. Chemicals are expensive. They're, you know, they're not always affordable. So just make sure you're asking the questions before you treat anything. Um, once your problem is identified, get rid of diseased plants and treat immediately. The last thing you want is spores hanging around just to create a problem again later. All right, so again, like I said, I've only covered, you know, some of the items that are, some of the products that are out there. There's a lot of stuff labeled for, for root diseases. Um, I only touched on things that are labeled for drenches. There's also a lot of things labeled for spray applications. And a lot of the products that I'm showing you have a really broad label and they cover a lot of other different diseases as a spray and not just a drench. So again, read your labels, know what you're treating, make sure you're using your chemicals appropriately, you're not overusing, underusing, rotate your modes of action. And there's a lot of options with the same active ingredient. So if you need a cheaper option or you buy from one person but on another, there's a lot of different items that are set up the same way with the same um, modes of action or same um, active ingredient. The first one I was going to cover was Flutioxinol, which is um, emblem and medallion are two great products with the same active. These are good for stem, and stem, stem crown and root rot, sorry. Um, and they work very well as part of a preventative rotation. An emblem has a label that is there for some edibles as well. Um, yeah, preventatively these work great as well as on top of other things. Next one I went into is your thiophane and methyl products. There is a lot of these out on the market, um, including the ones I have listed there, but there's also other generics and other things. So again, just ask the question. These are good for most root rots, except for Pythium and Phytophthora, so I'd kind of stay away from some of these if you're looking at Pythium and Phytophthora right off the bat. Um, Clary 3336 is labeled for some edibles, so just, again, read your label. Um, Banrot is kind of a nice product. It is a blend of two active ingredients, so it is also labeled for Pythium and Phytophthora, so if you're unsure of what exactly you're treating, uh, Banrot is a good option to use in that case. Uh, Mona Action on all these is one. Banron is, again, a blend, so it's one and 14. Um, Truban and Terazol, the Etradiazoles is what I went into next. These are good for Pythium and Phytophthora, um, and they're really good at stopping a uh, disease from spreading. Once you get it into the, drench it into the plant, let it soak it up, and usually it stops the problem pretty quickly. Um, they can be used preventatively and curatively. Um, they're great in a fungicide rotation program for a drench. And their mode of action is 14. And again, Banrod is 1 in 14. Uh, my next one is Presta. This one I put in for veggie growers and organic growers. Um, this one is a biofungicide. It is a fungus. Um, it is labeled for a spray as well as a drench, but it also controls root diseases caused by Fusarium, Phytophthora, and Pythium, and it suppresses Rhizoctonia. Um, Pre-stop actually colonizes plant roots to crowd out pathogens, and like I said, it's labeled for ornamentals and edibles, and it is OMRI listed, and it has also a spray label as well. All right, my next one is Orvigo. Um, I haven't really used this one much. It is a newer chemical. It just came out a year or two ago. It is got a drench rate for the treatment of Phytophthora root crown and stem rot. Um, it's supposed to be quick acting and stop the spread of disease quite quickly. It has a mode of action of 45 and 40. 
next one on the list is Segway. Um, Segway is a drench for Pythium and Phytophthora. It can be used as a protectant, and it can also quickly stop a disease from spreading. Um, it's got a mode of action of 21. Then stops next on the list. This is again a good chemical for the drench for Pythium, Pythium and Phytophthora. It moves systemically upward through the plant. Um, it's for greenhouse use only, so be careful of where you use this. And it's got a mode of action of 11. Phosphite um, is next on my list. I put this one in again for any edibles and edible growers. There's another one, phosphite, elude, which you can use. Um, I didn't add it on the list, but it is also a, one of the original phosphites. They're good for Pythium and Phytophthora. Often they're used a little bit more preventatively um, to help, and they can really help boost a plant's natural defense. They seem to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a growth regulator, a growth enhancement action with them as well. So if you're looking for an extra boost from your plants, um, alute or phosphite is something that you can drench with and get a little something out of. Like I said, they're labeled for edibles and ornamentals, and they have a mode of action of 33. The last one on my list that I put in is regalia. Um, regalia is labeled for edibles only. It's a plant-based biofungicide. Uh, it suppresses soil-borne diseases and promotes root growth. It is OMRI um, listed, so if you are a veggie grower or an organic grower, this is an excellent chemical to use as well. That is kind of all that I had for you guys today. Again, like I said, this is not everything that's out there. I kind of left out all rates and that kind of stuff. I figured that's something you can read off the label. You can figure out works what works best for your program. This is just a broad spectrum of what's available out there for drench for root-borne diseases. Um, yeah, so that's kind of all I had for you today. Again, plenty out there, plenty to do. Here's a little bit more about um, Civicios at the end. And I also, if you have any questions or anything, um, here's my email. Okay. Thank you, Kerry, for your presentation. It was great. Um, we have just one question and one comment. Sure. The, the question is, do you have experience with these products in a rock wool media? I do not. We do not use any rock wool media, so I've never, um, I have no experience with that. I'm not exactly sure what would be best for those. Um, I would actually contact the, the chemical reps of the chemical companies themselves for that. I don't use Rockwell here. Okay. And again, there's no other question, but the other one is just a, a comment. Uh, the comment is that Emblem is now sold as Spirito. S-P-I-R-A-O. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it does have the new name on it. Sorry about that. Yeah, that there was just one more question that just came just came in right now. Um, sure. Just wondering if you have SOPs for training staff with water management as part of your overall plan. Yes, 